Right, let's go to the situation. Very terrible. You can have some very. Yeah, the Australian element and the wife, the other one on Palau is uh, another island. Okay. So that's taken up by uh, New Zealand. Okay. Okay, so so far we have uh, called in 108 uh, uh, tenders. Mm -hmm. and, uh, drawing specifications are released, so mm -hmm. we are on home calls. So you'll see majority of the schools got damaged. We came through here. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took out this island, mm -hmm. went along here. So this got hit quite badly. Mm -hmm. So essentially carried across through here and it sort of went off. Mm -hmm. So that's the path. So maybe um, we are having the engineers on board. They are um, uh, duly registered with the Fiji Council of uh, um, Insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all carry uh, ASNZ registrations as well. So in, in, in getting them fully compliant to the current code and uh, overseas code. So our evacuation centers are, for example, planned in such a way that uh, what what was happening in Fiji before is all schools were considered as evacuation centers. Mm. And the reason why we got delayed is that we don't we didn't have the footprint, initial footprint mm. where the schools are and all. So now with the assistance of the Fiji Institute of Engineers, we we are getting more better platform to work with and the next uh, event and all will be able to get into more details mm. as well. Okay. So uh, our uh, re uh, recuperation time will improve as mm. well drastically. Okay. So Vice President, a lot of the schools in, in, in Fiji that were built, they're built by either faith-based organizations yeah, or community-based. So, you know, in some of the schools, for example, as and when they got funds, they would build one classroom. Mm -hmm. So you could have a school sometimes with 20 buildings. Um, so the idea now is that when you're building back better also, we can have one building with one roof, but maybe eight different classrooms. Mm -hmm. So you have exactly. only one roof to deal with. So these yeah. are the sort of ways that we're also dealing with the two improvements here. Yeah. In addition to the standard improvements, yes. you know, adhering to the codes. And most of the buildings, a lot of the buildings, uh, we should say, that uh, did not actually have even a architectural drawing. They just basically put together by the community. Mm. So that's where the problems also arose yeah. too. That obviously is the micro level with the different, uh, uh, you know, divisions, different districts, different provinces. Mm. That gives you exactly specifically what is happening in those areas. Mm. Uh, and uh, we think it's uh, quite a good thing that the construction implementation unit has come up with. Because apart from that, in, in the future too, we want to have similar type of sort of tracking systems mm. so you know exactly what is happening. Yeah. So, you know, you really are taking something that, that's a, a disaster or a negative event uh, and taking the opportunity that it provides to have a better outcome Absolutely. going forward. Absolutely. So that's, Absolutely. that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah, they've uh, done a lot of detailed work to... Yes. And, you know, we, we're actually very grateful also for the Fiji Institution of Engineers, the private sector mm. uh, organization. Uh, generally, there used to be previously a tendency of relying on in-house architects and engineers who have gone outside now, which has meant that we're able to do it a lot better, but also at a much faster space. Mm. And be able to get a lot more, I suppose, um, cutting-edge technology that we can use mm. and systems if we simply just relied on the people in-house within within mm. government. So which is okay. also increasing a lot of work sure. uh, in the private sector. creates a lot of job opportunities too. For them. And yeah. they continue to build their capacity. Absolutely. As well. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this is my first visit to the Pacific as Vice President for East Asia and the Pacific. And uh, I'm delighted that I'm starting in Fiji. Uh, so it was an opportunity for me personally to understand better uh, the countries in our region to uh, understand the challenges that they are facing and also have discussions with counterparts, uh, key counterparts on how we can strengthen our partnership and how we can be more effective in helping uh, the countries of the Pacific uh, seize fully the opportunities they have as well as uh, uh, do better in addressing the challenges to their development. Uh, for Fiji in particular, um, you know, I arrived on, on Sunday, I've had a chance uh, to 
understand what's happening on the government's efforts to rebuild uh, following uh, the cyclone and uh, how the government is rebuilding better. I think it provides lessons for other countries in the Pacific who are similarly vulnerable and who go through similar experiences. And I, I think uh, the big lesson of using this negative event uh, as a positive thing going forward, you know, really uh, looking at the school infrastructure, making sure that the courts are adhered to. Um, and and also having more detailed and better architectural designs of these schools and building them more in a more resilient way. Uh, all of these are good lessons that I think uh, will support other countries. And I think also using the private sector more as, as part of the solution as opposed to just using public sector solutions. Uh, that is also uh, an interesting lesson uh, for other countries uh, because it does create jobs and also builds the capacity. Um, and then we've discussed uh, with the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Economy our uh, partnership. Um, as you know, the World Bank didn't do much in Fiji for quite some time, but since 19, uh, 2015, we're re-engaging, we're working uh, with Fiji on transport infrastructure, uh, investments uh, alongside ADB, and we've discussed uh, other possible areas that we could work in uh, to really help uh, optimize uh, Fiji's location and potential role as a regional hub and how that vision can come into being, benefiting not only Fiji but more countries in the region. So we've had very substantive discussions and um, we're also going to be talking to youth groups. We'll talk with other development partners to see how they see Fiji and how we can work together better with them. During your, you. during your discussions uh, since your stay, uh, of course there's a magnitude of work going on with regards to rebuilding and, and uh, getting a lot of the schools and public infrastructure uh, back on track. Has there been any discussion on how the World Bank could assist uh, financially? Well, uh, we have already provided financial support to, uh, which is now uh, supporting the government's response to uh, the cyclone. Uh, working closely with ADB, uh, some of the funding that we provided is, is coming into the government's uh, work. As I said, we're already uh, working on a transport infrastructure uh, operation, uh, again, working with the ADB on that. Uh, that is under implementation, so it will still take a while to get all of that uh, finished, uh, but certainly there other areas that uh, we uh, look forward to continuing conversations on with government on how uh, we can uh, do more. Uh, we're beginning preparation of what we call a systematic country diagnostic, which will form the basis of our next strategy document. And so in that context, we'll firm up uh, some of our future engagements uh, under the partnership. Yes, we did, of course, raise a number of issues. Uh, in respect of how we think that uh, perhaps uh, World Bank can uh, look at a number of issues in the manner in which they deal with their member countries. It's not just specifically about Fiji. We had discussions around uh, small states, mm -hmm. um, you know, access to concessional funding and events through which you should be able to get that. And we also talked about a number of the regional initiatives mm -hmm. that perhaps we can collaborate with the World Bank, and not just for the benefit, as the Vice President highlighted, for Fiji per se, but also for the rest of the other Pacific Island countries. So a lot of it is, you know, um, work on foot, and we'll be communicating mm -hmm. a lot more on that, and uh, hopefully we'll get some traction on that, and we'll be able to share that with you once we get traction. Thank you. Thank you.